Hello everyone, welcome to my Evil Within 2, a Kamu difficulty, no upgrades, no keys walkthrough, and this is chapter 14, Burning the Altar, and this is one of my favorite chapters in this game. Not only are these stealth encounters really well designed, and if you intelligently use your uh, warden crossbow in order to deal with the enemies, you'll be able to get through them very well, but the boss fight against Father Theodore is one of my favorite boss fights in the Evil Within series, because it perfectly personifies exactly what survival horror is, and it demonstrates just how much Sebastian just evolves as the games progress. And that is exactly what should happen with every single character in a survival horror series. They should always evolve as the games move on. They should never feel like the exact same kind of character they were in the older games. And I can definitely say, without question, that Sebastian in The Evil Within 2 is so much more evolved compared to how he was in the first Evil Within. Like, he's gone from being just a very cliched uh, police detective to someone who's really been through it all. And to quote Alex Wesker from Resident Evil Revelations 2, Sebastian has pretty much conquered fear and earned the right to become a god, almost. And he definitely feels like it in this boss fight with Father Theodore. And a lot of people complain about the boss fight with Father Theodore, but I'm just like, why? Do you people not understand the lore? Is it hard for feeble minds like yourself to really comprehend the lore greatly? Father Theodore is a secretive personality type. He's a cult leader. He's a master of neuro-linguistic programming. You think he's the kind of person who's just going to attack someone head-on? No, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't fit his psychopathology whatsoever. As Hoffman described, he's the kind of person who's able to essentially find the inner weaknesses within individuals and exploit them so that he can fold these individuals into his flock. And the way he does that with Sebastian in this boss fight, where he's able to just essentially see a lot of Sebastian's past traumas because that is how STEM has magnified that ability, like, it makes so much sense. And unfortunately, it backfires in the end because he doesn't account for the fact that Sebastian has really had enough of playing games and he has really like conquered his fears of STEM so much, but then Father Theodore takes that even further by forcing Sebastian to confront his inner demons, and these inner demons are personified as being the manifestations that he encountered in STEM the very first time. You might have thought Sebastian had no fears whatsoever after the first Evil Within, but the comic proves that wrong, and I've read the comic. The, the Evil Within, the interlude, bridges the story between the Evil Within 1 and the Evil Within 2, and it showcases that Sebastian just never really recovered from his experiences in the first Evil Within, and based on that, it's understandable why they decided to use the Sadist and the Keeper and Laura for this boss fight, but a lot of people just look at it so superficially, saying it's a reskin, without fully understanding why it was done in the first place. And for so-called Evil Within fans, like, that is pretty feeble. That's incredibly feeble that they just don't bother looking past the superficial aspects of this boss fight. Like, what a bunch of morons. I am not that whatsoever. I am a true Evil Within fan. I love the lore. I love the story. I love the gameplay. I just love the characters. I love everything about the Evil Within series. Like, this series really knows how to do survival horror, and as I mentioned before, this boss fight with Father Theodore is exactly what survival horror is. Conquering your fears, overcoming your self-doubt, and just confronting your inner demons in order to essentially come out of the other side unscathed and just feeling like a new kind of person, like just free from fear. It's just incredible the way they've portrayed this boss fight, and I especially love the music that plays during this boss fight. It's the perfect representation of Sebastian's rage. All of the fear that he originally had inside of him has been converted into rage, and the way they portray that is amazing. I think it's one of the most well done and most impactful scenes ever in the Evil Within series. And speaking of Theodore's boss fight, we're about to head over there in just a moment. I'm going to take the time to just dump all my gunpowder into a bunch of resources because this is really the the final point in the game where i really need the workbench and now that that's done i'm just going to get started on the boss fight and for all you evil within fans out there i'm sure this is going to trigger a lot of nostalgia for you i'm sure you guys can remember this scene from chapter one where you are running down this hallway trying to escape the sadist and they brought it back in this game and when i first did this boss fight and i saw this scene i was like what's going to happen is the Sadist going to chop off Sebastian's leg again? 
Like, I actually thought that was going to happen right here, but nothing happens right here. And then you see the elevator right in front, and then it gives this cutscene right here. And then the sadist just disappears, but then he reappears right in front of you. Nowhere to run now, right? Well, watch this. Enough of this shit. Indeed, Sebastian. I've pretty much adopted that into my speech patterns at this point. I have a habit of saying enough of this shit whenever I really feel like I'm getting stressed out with a section or just really getting frustrated or under a lot of rage. I really feel Sebastian right here. Not this time. And I'm glad he doesn't try to run away. If he tried to run away, I would have been severely disappointed. Because then he would just allow that fear to just consume him and just rule over his life. But he's not allowing that to happen and instead he is using the Sadist Chainsaw to his advantage in order to get rid of him. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to stop him at all. <sighs> Theodore's plan really backfired in the end. He did not account for Sebastian fighting back. And I think that might have to do with the fact that Theodore is a bit of a narcissist himself, given that he sees himself as being in a position above others. He might have an inherent hatred of humanity. And just like every other person he's come across, he probably thought ill of Sebastian, which is why he thought he was able to get away with this. But as you can tell right now, that's not working at all. Sebastian has really conquered fear at this point. He's just turned all that fear into rage, and it has just allowed him to fight back against his inner demons. And now we move on to the next inner demon, which I'm sure you can tell easily by the barbed wire and also the safe right next to Sebastian that this is the Keeper. And this is the hardest part of the boss fight, like the one that's a lot more demanding, but... Using your revolver and also your explosive bolts will be able to get this section done easily. So, upon first starting this boss fight, the Keeper is going to immediately attack you. Uh, he most of the time does this move right here, but there are some rare moments where he can choose to run at you, and you'll have to uh, run in a different direction. But I think you can just confidently run past him. But now that he's active, I'm going to use my revolver and whittle down his health a little bit. The Keeper gets stunned a lot better than he does in the first evil with them. Because as you see right here, just being hit by a couple of revolver shots, he's already down, and I can deal in some additional damage. And I'm going to use my shotgun here, and uh, right now I'm going to have to use my shotgun again. And then two more hits from my shotgun will kill this guy. But this is important right here. When you kill the Keeper, you need to get to this spot where I'm at very quickly, so that you can influence the spawn of the next two Keepers. You need to plant an explosive bolt right there, and then you need to use the tripwire function on the explosive bolt. And... By standing in this spot, you will cause the Keepers to trip the Explosive Bolts every single time. And the Explosive Bolts on this game are a guaranteed stun compared to the Evil Within 1. And unlike the Evil Within 1, they do not have Phantom Range. So you will not get screwed by the Explosions whatsoever. But just look how consistent the hit stun is on these enemies. And all I need to do now is fire two more Explosive Bolts. And this is the final blow right here. So that is the next demon conquered. Yeah, Sebastian really feared the Keeper in the interlude comic, but I guess he was really glad to finally have the chance to encounter the Keeper again and show him who is the boss and who is really the master of fear. And as I say that, we now have this personification of fear right here, which is a manifestation that a lot of people are terrified of. And I'm really glad she's back. I burned her once, and I will do it again. Laura was such a fun boss fight in Evil Than 1. And getting the chance to do it all over again is very fun. And you want to use your shock bolts here. So Laura will not be affected by the shock bolts while she's teleporting. So you got to bear that in mind. And all you need to do is turn this valve. There are a couple of opportunities to pick up shock bolts around here. And she's teleporting right now, but she's very slow to attack. And I'm going to find the shock bolt right over here. And the shock bolts have an incredible amount of range. They are really good at stunning enemies at a very long distance. And as long as Laura isn't teleporting, I'm fine. And she's right behind me, so I need to move. The shock bolt stuns her, and now I just need to lure her into the center of the room right here. And then once she's in the center of the room, I'm going to run for the switch to my right and turn on the incinerator. You have to hit Laura twice with the incinerator, and that will be the end of the boss fight. And as you can tell, I have more than enough shock bolts to keep Laura stunned. She doesn't stand a chance against me. This is exactly what it means to conquer fear and earn the right to become a god. Sebastian, you do me proud, greatly. 
So that's the first hit from the incinerator. Now I just need to bring her back into the center. She tries to do the grab on me, but she sealed her own fate. By doing that, she has allowed me to just get her into the center of the room. And now is my chance to take her out. And I have weakened Father Theodore's influence significantly. And that is the end of this amazing boss fight. The personification of survival horror right here. This is definitely, without a doubt, one of the greatest boss fights ever in survival horror history. Like, this boss fight did nothing wrong whatsoever. And Sebastian has really had enough. He is putting Theodore in his place right now. Showing him exactly who he is. A coward. That is exactly what all cult leaders are. Cowards. They always try to act tough. But when push comes to shove... They're cowards in the end. They can't do anything when somebody fights back. Their dam will always be broken when one person steps up to put them in their place. What a great boss fight. What a great ending to Father Theodore's character arc. But this has been Chapter 14. Stay tuned for the future parts. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.